Welcome back to the Pastor Study. It's another great day for us to think about what it means to be followers of Jesus. We do this in a variety of ways, and there are a lot of practices of the faith that have existed since early days in the church that we in the West don't practice. Part of that is cultural, part of it is things are lost in time as we move forward and we lose parts of the tradition. Coming from an Anabaptist tradition, there are parts that the church I grew up in did not recognize the, <clears throat> the church calendar outside of Christmas and Easter and Palm Sunday. Notions like Lent and Advent were not part of what we experienced. It's not that they weren't there, it's just that it wasn't part of the tradition as we practiced it. At some point, that dropped out of our common experience. I don't know how that happened. I'm not familiar enough with my home church's history to actually say. Um, but that, that's part of what happens. Things like centering prayer also dropped out of common practice. In some cases it was preserved in monasteries and religious orders. So centering prayer does not sound like something that we typically talk about. We talk about intercession, we'll talk about supplications, and a lot of this practice of prayer in those senses involves you and I doing a lot of talking to God and very little listening. And I would say that for the average Christian that I know, most of us don't think of prayer as a time to listen, but as a time to speak. And even less, we, we don't consider prayer as a time to spend with God. We struggle with some of this. And you know, there's a lot of concerns in some Christian circles about things that may be perceived as coming from outside of the tradition of Christianity. When we talk about centering prayer, that's really not the case. Yes, there are some similarities with some Eastern forms of meditation. It's true. Um, does that mean that's where it comes from? No, well, no. But we have to remember that Christianity is an Eastern religion. It started in the ancient Near East as a form of Judaism. So practices that were common in ancient Judaism came into the church as well. And some of the practices that developed within the church had very little to do with the Judaism that came before it. So even from the outset there have been other influences and ways of practicing that are different. This is not something that comes from outside of Christianity unless you say it started within Judaism and that may well be the case. Let me be clear about what it's not. Centering prayer is not a New Age practice. It perhaps does feel a bit like mysticism but there have always been Christian mystics it is not part of New Age mysticism or something like that. It is not a form of Eastern meditation. Remember, in Eastern religious traditions, meditation often means emptying our mind of any thought. That is not the case when we talk about centering prayer. In centering prayer, we are talking about filling our minds with an awareness of God's presence and using tools to enable us to be aware of God and spend time with God. It's not, this is an ancient meditative form of prayer. It was revived in the 60s and 70s by three gentlemen, Thomas Keating, Basil Pennington, and William Menninger. So what is centering prayer? It is a prayer that at first feels a little mysterious because it is different than how we typically pray. It's not about us speaking a lot. In fact, it's about us just simply being with God. What we want to talk about here, and I want to make sure I get this right, we're not asking God to do things for us. There are times when that's what we need to do in prayer, but that is not what centering prayer is about. Now, I want you to think about some of the friendships you have with people around you. And 
you don't always ask your friends to do things. Sometimes you simply talk to them. Sometimes you listen to them. Sometimes you simply spend time with them without speaking any words. All these things are okay. It's about being with that person. And that centering prayer is trying to get us to realize that our relationship with God should have some similarities with that. We shouldn't always just be asking things of God. Now, if you had a friend who only ever asked you to do things for them, does that feel like a friendship? Does it feel like a relationship? Or does it feel like you're a service provider? So you, you see what I'm getting at here. When we're always asking God to do things for us, it's like we're either turning God into a genie in a bottle, give me this wish, this wish, and this wish, or into a servant, do this for me, do this for me, do this for me, or some sort of contractor that we engage to do our bidding. So we go to church, we pay our tithe, and so we expect God to do these things that we ask. Now, I'm not saying we often talk about it like that, but you can see how quickly it would develop into some sort of pattern like that. So we're not going to ask God to do anything for us in this except to be in relationship with God. We are going to sit in the presence of God and give God our undivided attention and love. That's it. That's what it's about. Now, when you pay attention, sometimes, if you're like me, your mind drifts. My mind gets drift. I get bored easily. It happens all the time. If you've ever checked your phone while you're watching a program on TV or a movie or a sporting event, you know what I'm talking about. If you've ever had your mind wonder when you're having a conversation with a person and you start thinking about 10 other things except being present with that person in that conversation, this happens when we attempt to be in God's presence undivided as well. Now we will use some words to help us think about what this means to be in the presence of God and to keep us focused there. A simple word is all that's necessary. It can be Jesus, love, peace, Father, or it can be a biblical praise, God is love. Be a little longer if you want it to be a little short, doesn't matter. The whole point is to encapsulate our intent, the intention of our hearts about being with God. So as I've said, centering prayer is not about intercession or requests or petitions. And so some people are going to feel like it's not real prayer. Our focus is not intercession. We'll talk about intercession at another point, and, and it's an important, valid, and necessary form of prayer. I'm not saying that it isn't. I'm just saying it's not the only one. We're going to talk about being focused on being in the presence of God. That's the point of centering prayer, to dwell in Christ and let the fruit of that dwelling or that abiding in Christ appear in our lives and work itself out in a myriad of ways. We will develop a quiet center in Christ that holds when the chaos of life sweeps over us and we don't quite know what to do with it, we will still know that Christ's love abides in us and we abide in Christ. It may seem like at the moment that nothing is taking place. That's okay. It's something that takes time to build. Centering a prayer will bring transformation, just like any other spiritual discipline. But in centering prayer, we are going to trust that Jesus is going to bring the transformation about in us. We're not doing this. This is his work in us, simply by being in the presence of God. Centering to prayer depends on the Holy Spirit to enable us to be in the Divine Presence. For the next few seconds, next few minutes, I'm going to outline what I want you to think about when it comes to centering prayer and what this looks like as a practice. So on a given day that you're going to practice centering prayer, I want you to set aside at least 15 minutes. Now if that goes really well and you want to increase it to 20, that's fine, or 30, whatever, However God leads you in this, go. You're going to start in a comfortable position. You're going to be there for at least 15 minutes. So we don't want to be focused on trying to get comfortable. We want to be in a place that's comfortable for us. You like to pray on your knees, that's fine. But remember, you're going to be on your knees for 15 minutes. So if that doesn't work, then feel free. In, 
ancient Jewish tradition, you raised your hands to pray like this. And if you want to be in that position for 15 minutes, that's great. But if it's going to become a distraction, don't. So you might be sitting in a comfortable position. That works. We don't want our posture and our body to be a distraction. We simply want it to facilitate being in God's presence. So settle into your comfort, comfortable position and then intentionally place yourself in the presence of the God uh, in the presence of God in the center of his love for you. It sounds kind of nebulous, doesn't it? How do you do that? How do we place ourselves in the presence of God? Well, we talked about that some with meditation. That's the point of learning to listen, to be aware of God's presence. In this case, we're, we're making the assumption that, that you've learned to work with that a little bit. But Centering Prayer will also help to develop that awareness of God's presence. So what helps you here to do that is going to depend on who you are and how comfortable you are with being silent and and expressing your desire to God. So you're going to start by placing yourself in the presence of God's love for you. And you're going to choose that simple word or phrase, that little tidbit of biblical passage that expresses your desire for God. Um, give me a line from a hymn, I love you Lord. It can be that simple but you want it to focus your energies and your attentions on God. Take time and do this repeatedly. Don't give up. The first few minutes are going to be filled with wondering how much time has passed and things you have to do today and the worries that are typically in your head and your heart they're gonna flood through there very quickly you will find thoughts that roll into your head that you just don't even know where they come from this is not a new experience this is one that is well documented within Christian history in fact uh, Evagrius Ponticus one of my mentors in the fourth century wrote about these demonic attacks that that surface in these times of quiet awareness of God's presence. They are not from God. They may be from demons, they may be from the evil one, they may be from your subconscious. I don't know how it works. I'm going to tell you that much that it's not from God. As they come, let them go. Acknowledge them, let them slide away. Realize what they are, a distraction and nothing more and gently bring yourself back to the presence of God. Use that word or your phrase, whatever it is, our Father, who art in heaven. Repeat it, and the distractions will pass. When they pass, when your mind has returned its focus to the living God, rest in the center of God's love. You don't have to do anything. God is doing the work. Simply be aware that God loves you and he is holding you in the palm of his hand. Trust that the Holy Spirit who abides in the depth of you as a follower of Christ will connect you with the Father and with the Son. That is the role of the Holy Spirit in your life and in my life. As your time comes to close, slowly disengage from your time of prayer. You can continue to recite a passage. You can pick up your Bible and read. You can sing a hymn. Don't be in a hurry. You are disengaging from actively being aware of God's presence and that is a place I want you to, to be. Spend that time there and when it's done slowly disengage and let this be part of your ritual. 
Now, as you practice this for the coming week, what I will ask is that you uh, jot down some thoughts, reflect on your time in prayer, particularly in the practice of centering prayer. And ask these questions. How do you express your desire for God today? Is praying your desire and love to God difficult? And if so, what does that tell you about you and your view of God? What is it like for you to spend time with God without speaking? Pay attention to what happens in your heart when you are quiet with God. How do you feel? Friends, I'm looking forward to talking to you more about this, and um, we will continue to explore some possibilities for prayer over the coming week. Just engage this practice of centering prayer and see what God is showing you through this. Peace, friends. I trust that God will bless you as you seek for him.